Wow. What up, y'all? I'm going to show y'all how to get samples in here and chop them up real quick. This is just a fast uh, run through if you pretty much know what you're doing, but you just don't know what's going on with the program. You're just now opening it. All right, we're going to show you how to load up and chop a sample real quick. Anyways, when you opened up uh, MPC, you would have been in the main mode over here. When you're chopping samples, you want to go over here to the little pencil icon. It's going to be a sample edit. You want to click on that, and you want to, wherever your samples are, might be on your desktop or wherever, you can do this little drop down menu here and find out where your samples are. Just drag and drop it onto right here. All right, I already got a sample in here, and I'm gonna show y'all how to chop it up and make a program and assign it to pads. All right, the main things you're gonna use, the buttons to trigger your sample is usually pad 10 and pad 11. That's gonna trigger from the beginning. Well, one's gonna be a one shot, that's pad 10, it's gonna go to sample all the way through. Pad 11 is going to be node on. You got to hold it down to go all the way through. Pad 8 and pad 4 you're going to use a lot too because that's going to play the, the end trigger of your trim marker. They're going to do the same things as pad 10 and pad 11. And then you got pad 13 you'll be using probably fairly a lot too if you want to get a loop. If you hold it down, it'll keep looping. But I'll show you what I'm talking about on this. See, pad 10. <laughs> You'll play it all the way through. Stop button. And uh, pad uh, 11. Just one shot. And the same thing with uh, the end of your trail marker here. One shot. And then all the way through. And if I want to hold down pad 13, it would just go all the way through here. Yeah, see? It just loops. But anyways, you got your three main buttons over here. You got the trim, the chop, and the program. The program, I'll go into detail into that later on in my video series. But uh, just worry about it. You're going to use your trim to drop it in here. And you got your two trim markers right here. You got your beginning point and your start point. This is going to be your zoom in right here, this little arrow. You go right to zoom in and left to zoom out. So which whatever one you can click on, it's going to zoom into it. And this link slices button right here, I'm going to get to that after I slice. And then you got a zero snap. It's going to snap to your zero crossing. That's real good for drum breaks and uh, with samples too. But see it uh, snap and it like jerk around to find a zero crossing. And sometimes it, it can be a BI, so I'll leave that off most of the times. So you can go freely. But yeah, that goes over the trim function there. Let me show you these boxes over here. These buttons over here, you can like discard parts of your sample, delete, silence, extract. Let's say you had a drum break or something. You want to distract like the kick and distract the snare and all that stuff. You can do that manually and then name them and save them. Normalize and so on, fade in and pitch. And bit reduction, you know, to get the grimy sound. You pitch, you're going to use your pitch in another way. I'll show you a better way to pitch your whole sample instead of trying to pitch it here. Okay, let me go up here and show you this. If you uh, right-click your bar up here, you got uh, the time and seconds, samples, or beats. I'll have it in beats here. I think this right here is like four bars. Anyways, you want to line up your trim markers if you want to use auto chop to get it like right on. You're not using auto chop. I mean, you really ain't gonna mess with it. Anyways, now we're gonna go over here to the chop button. Boom. It's just gonna have where you could play the sample, play all of it. I mean, that really don't matter right here. But anyways, you got, you're gonna steady in over here to the chop too. The menu, there's a drop down menu right here. Manual, where you can manually put in your uh, chops. Like, see that? That little red arrow, you can just left click and you can put in your own chops. But most I know everybody's gonna be like want to use auto chop. So use threshold. That's gonna by the way the, how low it gets the noise threshold and BPM. I, I never use them. I use uh, regions because it's gonna use a equal amount chops like 16 chops or whatever. It's gonna automatically do 16 chops from the get go. So let's hit regions. Boom, 16 chops. 
you can go up to uh, 128 chops, I think. Yeah, eight pad banks. You can go up or down on these right here. See, I got this pull with your mouse, turn it into eight chops. We're going to do 16. Let's see here. All right, I'm going to press on chop one. All right, so whenever you, uh, you zoom in, it's going to zoom into whatever pad you hit. I chop one. The link slices, this is what I'm going to show you. See, your slices right now are whatever your end slice marker is going to be the beginning of your next marker. So when you move that, that's going to be the beginning of your next slice, your next chop. If you take it off, then once you move the end of chop one, it's going to end right there, and then chop two is going to have its own beginning. I usually use it on uh, the link slices because, you know, if you want them to roll smoothly, your chops with your sample. I've used it before different ways, but whatever way you feel comfortable with. Anyways, once you get all your stuff, you can zoom in. I mean, if you're watching this video, I'm sure you know how to chop a sample. You just... uh. You know, chop it up, set your chops. And uh, once you want to get them to set them so you can bring them into main mode to use them, you want to make a program out of them. You want to use the non-destructive program down here. The non-destructive convert. You could do a slice to pad. That's slice like uh, one sample to the pad. Yeah. I mean, you might want to do that for loops or something. But uh, i get into that in another video. But you want to do a new program. That's going to do your non-destructive down here. It's going to slice up a whole program, but it's going to be all new samples. It's going to save a sample for every slice. So it's going to take up a lot of memory. And I don't think you can come back and fix your uh, slice markers, but I, maybe you can. I think you might can. But anyways, we're not going to even study on that crap down here. All right. And, uh, and all this stuff over here, this is like your zoom in. You could, I'm sure people use this instead of this up here. To zoom in and like set your slices, but I mean, if you had a different NPC with knobs on it, then it makes sense. But I, I don't ever really mess with it, so hats off to you if you do it, whatever. I don't care. But anyway, I mean, we're gonna go down here to the non structure jumps. We're gonna hit new program, boom, we hit it. Then I'll convert to new program using slices, slice type, non destructive slice. You got your box, uh, create events. All that's going to do is create your MIDI blocks, you know, so it's going to be a straightforward progression. I don't want that. Who wants that? Nobody. Okay. We're going to go do it. Just like Nike. We got it. All right. Now you see over here, you got your program box. It's now a program. It's going to be the name of your sample that you chopped up. This is going to turn into a new program. Let's go back to main mode. Uh, you want to click on the sample that you just chopped up and you want to pull it over to the first pad. And then boom. They're set. They're already set and they're going to be set to mono instead of poly. And you want to go over here. One of the big areas you're going to be working is your program edit. So we're going to pitch your sample up and down where this is where I pitch my whole sample because it's going to pitch everything. You got your semitones that goes up like uh goes down like 12 semitones and up 12 semitones. I don't know why this is like 36, but yeah, I think it's 12. That's what it says in the manual anyways. What's where you pitch it? You know, smaller is going to be pitch for slow or you want to get your Kanye West on. And um, your fine tune, it's going to go up. Just you know, that's going to go up like equal one of these right here. You go like one semitone at 99. You know, fine tune for your uh, drums or whatever, some other samples. It's where you like be layering your drums and everything, but I'm not going to get into that this video. But I got step by step, day by day, TGIL Friday all day on these videos. So hit me up.
But anyways, man, that's how you do it. That's right, right, yeah. But yeah, man, I don't know if I said it, but yeah, I'm doing this FL Studio because standalone mode, I don't know if it looks too much different than this. If you got any questions on that, I'll be happy to answer them. But you can't do much in standalone mode. I mean, you can make a beat, but it's a lot more harder. I mean, you got to put a lot more work into it because you can only have one program going so you want to have you know different tracks you can only have one track because you're going to load up another instance in like fl studio or DAW you use so i'm going to have my drums like my drums on a different track you know my sample on another track but you you, you can pull it off in standalone mode but uh, i ain't messing with it forget that crap but anyways man that's how you do it it's easy as that man if you want to hit record while you're in your DAW and just play And that's it, man. For the step-by-step -step videos, man, let's check out. I got a whole series on them, so hit me up. Later, y'all.